Hello everyone, this is County Historian Larry Tippin. We have been doing a series, what we call Tiny Towns and Vanish Villages of Putnam County. Today, I'd like to talk about Marunerstown and Kitesville in Madison Township. We're only gonna hit the high points of most of the history. We can't talk about everything in the time we have. <clears throat> I wanna point out as you're viewing this, if I get ahead of you and reading a newspaper article or you're looking at a map or something, you can hit the pause button on your toolbar. Or if you want to go back, you can grab this little dot and pull it backwards. Brunerstown and Kitesville, Western Madison Township. But if one lived in this area a hundred years ago, or so, you would not need to come to the big city very often as there were three general stores within about a mile of each other, one each in Kitesville, Brunerstown, about very uh, as seen on this map, 1879, Atlas, Putnam County, Brunerstown, Kitesville. We talked about Bavaria in a different presentation. Bruner's Town was plotted in 1837 by Joseph Bruner. This is a small number of lots, 16 lots total. But it had a post office. The first postmaster was, as I write, was appointed 1839, so it was an early post office. Then Samuel Witt, 1859, or 1858, excuse me. But the post office was discontinued in 1859. But there's another post office soon after that in the same area called Johnsville. This is from a publication called Postmasters 1832 to 1971. We have a handwritten journal of all the postmasters in this Putnam County part. We have Stephen Johns, who is appointed postmaster at Johnsville. 1861, that might be a four, but we think it's a one. It was discontinued then 1863, although that could be a five. It's very hard to read some of these things. So we think 1861 kind of clarified this. In the Green Council banner, October of 1861, a post office is about to be established at or near Brunerstown in Putnam County to be called Johnsville. Stephen Johns Esquire will be the postmaster. Look at the 1864 map of Putnam County, which is courtesy of the Library of Congress. It was online. You can view it if you'd like. Here's Brunerstown, Madison Township. But then here's where Stephen Johns had quite a few acres just west of that. So we're pretty confident that Stephen Johns post office at Johnsville was at or near Brunerstown. This is very interesting. In the early days, you had to carry the mail from one post office to the next and the post office let bids, usually a four year term, and this one is 1846 to 1850, where they define their routes and they solicit bids. So here's one at route number 4001 from Greencastle by Brunerstown, Dixon Mill to Rockville, 25 miles and back once a week. Now this Dixon Mill is kind of interesting. Mansfield, or as we know it, was originally called New Dublin by James Kelsey in 1820. Within a couple of years then, it was changed to Dixon Mill. And then Strains Mill, before it became known as Manfield in the 1800s, 1880s actually, excuse me. Here's a photo of Putnam County Public Library titled Brunerstown School, currently built on a hillside. Very interesting photo. We like to look at newspaper articles. We go to the Hoosier Chronicles online, get a lot of valuable information. From 1928, Everett Ellis of Brunerstown and Miss Opal Summers were married, residents of the Bride Spirit. 
Mr. Alice is our huckster who is carrying a good trade to people on this line. The bride and groom will make their home for the present with the groom's parents, Mr. and Mrs. Jess Alice. This 1929 newspaper article talks about Madison Center, so the center of Madison Township in the area. They talk about Roberts Johns, Jess Alice, the Boonerstown merchant, was in our neighborhood. His son, Everett, formerly partners Boonerstown, had dissolved their partnership and the business would now be conducted under the name J.L. Alice instead of Ellis and Son. Jess Alice and Son Everett, formerly partners in Boonerstown, had dissolved the partnership. This is just a close up of what, what we just saw, so we can see it a little bit better. The 1940 article where Alice Huckster truck was burned, destroyed by a mysterious fire of some sort. The driver was unaware of the fire was raging inside the body where the merchandise was carried, opened the door at the home where he was at, blown back against the fence by the sudden, sudden expansion of overheated air. It was not, or, not burned or otherwise injured. The truck was a total loss. So not long after that, Mr. Ellis advertises wanted to buy or rent a used huckster body. And then he announces, then, not long after, my truckster, huckster truck has been burned recently, has been repaired, and I resume the regular route Monday with new stock and special prices. This is a very valuable photo, the Daily Matter of 1940. Shows Alistair Alice in the early, of course, old wagon days, the original huckster wagon, and then the new modern motorized trucks, 1940. Very, very nice photo. And if you want to go to the Hoosier Chronicles and then do a search for this and read the whole article, it's pretty neat. June 5th, 1940, Daily Banner. 1928, Madison Center. Said they were called the Mr. Kite, the, sorry, the bottom Mr. Kite. Charles Kite is our new huckster. 1941, a truck crashed at the corner of Jackson, near where the buzz bomb is now. Highlighted some of this. It's kind of interesting if you read the whole thing, if you want it, if you go to Hoosier Chronicles on this date. It says, the truck had the front end badly damaged while a coop of chickens on the front bumper was killed when it was demolished by the crash of the cement loaded truck was not badly damaged. So they had like they had to put everything wherever they could. So they had chicken cages on the front bumper of the truck. Sometimes people could not afford to cash money for the goods. Sometimes they exchanged for chickens or other various animals or other bartered goods. The article from 1934 was high point Gasoline, zoom in, it shows that Luther Thompson at Kiteville was the dealer in that area for that company. And sadly, 1950, Luther Thompson, it's hard to read because it's so shaded. I'll zoom in on a little bit of it over here. Basically had a heart attack and died en route to the county hospital. Operated the store at Kitesville on the Putnam Park line for the last 17 years. Very sad story. 1924, another article that a speed sort of touring car were both damaged, closing near Kitesville on the Putnam Park County line. Interesting article, 1931. Where Ernest Smith, aged about 42, prior to a store at Kitesville, the Putnam Park County line, recovered from night 
knife wounds allegedly been inflicted during a dance at a store at about 1.30 in the morning. Maybe not a good time to be doing so. Suffering from deep cuts to his right thigh and so forth and so on. There's a photo of somebody who had some time on their hands. They made a stone wall, pulled an old farm wall, it looks like F-20 tractor near what they call site of Kitesville. 1946 article for a farmer named Ed Groner residing west of Kitesville was painfully burned while fighting a brush fire. He said to have suffered a heart attack and fell under the flames. Very sad story. And then, 1915, Madison Township, a ball game at Brunerstown Sunday between Kitesville and Four Corners ended the victory of Kitesville, a score of 61 to 4. Hope you've enjoyed a very brief early history of Brunerstown and Kitesville. You can come back, we'll talk some more the next time.